Hi, how are you? So coming back to you here with another annual recap of how the year went and uh, you know some stuff about what I did, uh, what I didn't do, highlights, just a review of the year. Uh, normally I like to do like a cute funny holiday video uh, with all the various characters that live here in the house. Uh, but I'm actually a little bit under the weather this year, unfortunately. So I had to do something a little bit more streamlined. Uh, so apologies for that. But let's get into it. 2019 uh, has come and gone. Uh, <clears throat> I am filming this video on the afternoon of Christmas Eve. Uh, possibly even getting that video up here tonight. Uh, but at the end of the day, December is running out and 2019 is almost over uh, and with it will be something extra special the end of a decade uh, a decade is every 10 years so 2010 to the end of 2019 was a decade uh, basically you used to call them like you know the 20s 30s 40s 50s uh, but tens don't sound very good so they tend to refer to the 10 years prior to this and these 10 years as kind of just the early 2000s. Uh, though it's really strange to think about people calling the 20s something other than the 1920s and the roaring 20s. But I guess we'll get there when we get there. So yeah, 2019. Let's see. I did a lot this year uh, for conventions. I did Anthro New England, Vernal Equinox, Pinefurcon, Anthrocon, uh, and Midwest Fur Fest. Uh, and PinefurCon was extra special for me. It was my first opportunity ever uh, to be guest of honor. They invited me to be guest of honor along with Adler the Eagle this year. And honestly, that was one of the best experiences of my life, entire life. Uh, it meant so much to me that they would want me to be a guest of honor uh, you know, when I've gone to conventions for so long now and seen people that I really adore and look up to as guest of honors, it really meant the world to me to be a guest of honor. Uh, so I will always be thankful to Pine for Con for that. And I, just like last year, I had a blast this year at Pine for Con. Um, getting to actually hang out with Adler and his partner Blazon in person was amazing. And honestly, their friendship has really blossomed uh, with me this year and I you know I love the heck out of them so Pine for a Con was excellent in a million ways I had a lot of good moments with a lot of great friends uh, and I really couldn't ask for anything else there uh, I had a lot of fun at all the other conventions I went to this year uh, Fernal Equinox is still probably my favorite one uh, now, well, Fernal Equinox and Anthrocon are probably tied for my favorite convention. Uh, Fernal Equinox is a nice, small convention, uh, whilst not being too small. And it's just good vibes all around. And Anthrocon, per usual, was flawless. Uh, I had a lot of fun, had a lot of good times at all of the various events. Uh, the parade was amazing, as always. I got to put one of my good friends in my suit du chef, my friend Frankie, and let him fursuit around and do his first uh, fursuit parade. So that was really cool. Uh, I just, I had a lot of fun at Anthrocon. I always do. The public suiting is on point. Uh, I had done an interview last year for the news and that reporter actually reached out to me on Twitter and said, hey, are you going to be at the convention again? I'd love for you to meet my wife and my, my kids. And I said, yeah. So I actually got to meet them. Uh, while I was in suit at the end of the parade, and that was really special. Uh, I had a lot of great moments at Anthrocon this year. A lot of beautiful new friendships, and just furthering the friendships that I've had with a lot of friends for a long time. Um, A&E was good as always, but A&E and MFF are my work conventions, uh, so I was pretty busy with staff duties, but both of those conventions were still Nonetheless, quite fun, uh, but yeah, 
I also got to do a couple other trips this year. Uh, I actually got to go visit my good friend Ari in Washington, D.C. That was really special. I hadn't been to Washington, D.C. in a while. Got to go around to a bunch of historical sites. And it was my first time actually going to West Virginia. And I got to see some historical sites out there. That was really, really cool. I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, it is always very moving to me when I get to go to a historical site. Uh, even if I've been there already, but especially a new site, to learn about that history. Because no matter what it was that happened there, it's really good to learn about our past because there's only one way to never make, sh make sure that we learn the lessons. And that is to look back there and reflect on those things that happened. So that was really fun. It was a really good weekend with my really good friend. I saw some beautiful nature as well while we were out there. We went on an amazing hike. Uh, yeah, it was just good times, good vibes, and I left that weekend feeling really refreshed. Uh, I even got a little camping in that weekend, which was super duper cool. Uh, I also did a trip up to Vermont. Uh, that was awesome. Did tons of public suiting at a quarry, which was really, really cool. And we went up a really big mountain. Uh, I can't remember the name of the mountain, but uh, it was one of it was one of those ones where you have to like put your car into different gears and stuff, and give your car brakes as you're going up because it's so steep. Uh, and then we got to we did we're doing this all in person. Like this is like one, like a day of driving. So we went to the quarry. It was, we're still in our like nasty Under Armour and stuff, we're driving around like like imbeciles because you can't drive obviously with your head and hand paws and foot paws and stuff on. Uh, but it was amazing. It was a lot of good times with a lot of good friends. Uh, really got to bond with them. Uh, we went to a really good brewery afterwards. We got amazing fursuit photos out of it. Uh, and the, uh, the little motel we stayed at was adorable. Uh, it was like a biker motel. So like everyone else there was like a biker, except us. It was super cool. Uh, and then I also went, uh, I had another awesome weekend with Tilt and all of my tune friends. And we went to the Catskills Mountains again, and we got to explore around there. And we celebrated Br'er Fox this year. That was really, really cool. Filmed some videos. Uh, that was awesome, beautiful retreat. The Catskills are gorgeous in the fall. And we did another hike there. That one was particularly cool because we went to a really cool abandoned ruined hotel. That was very exciting. And uh, like probably the most exciting and most fun event of this year was my two best friends from high school, like pre-furry, who are both now furries. Uh, if you know Ferric Polar Bear and Little Fen, uh, they got married. They got married and that was so cool. They're my best friends from high school. We, we became furries together. And they got married um and the wedding was amazing she looked gorgeous he looked stunning uh everyone had a good time there were tons and tons of furries there along with our high school friends uh, you know other friends family and everyone got along really well and it was just a bunch of bunch of fun uh that was probably the most fun i had all year to be honest uh, and host, hosting her little bachelorette thing, which we just did a paint night because I'm not about to go around down the town and be like, yeah, look, look at the stupid, inappropriately shaped popsicle. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I did have a lot of fun this year with events. Uh, oh, something else that was really fun this year was uh, WoW Classic. Uh, I love World of Warcraft. I love World of Warcraft so much, and World of Warcraft released a version of the game called Classic, which is the game prior to any actual expansions coming out, uh, vanilla World of Warcraft, if you will. And that came out in August, and I kind of spent the whole summer recruiting furries, and we made a really, really big furry guild on the Horde side on the realm Grovulus, 
and which is an RP PVP server. And my gosh, that was so successful. Uh, I really didn't know how it was going to go. I just knew I wanted to be able to play World of Warcraft with other people that like to play it, and it would be a big bonus because it could be like a safe space for furries in the queer community. And it was! It was a roaring success. Um, the guild is still active today. Uh, just last week we finally downed the final boss in the current raid that's out called Molten Core. Uh, final boss is Ragnaros. We had been clearing up to him week after week after week, but we finally were able to clear him last week, and that's really cool, and I've gotten to meet a whole bunch more furries because of that, which is, like, super awesome, um, and I actually got to run into a bunch of them at Midwest Furfest, and we're gonna have a big party next year at SWA for all of our guildies, uh, and hopefully do meetups at other conventions as well, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it's always a nice opportunity when something so silly uh, can bring a bunch of people together and, you know, create this new community out of a community that already exists. And it's been really nice to be able to come home after a hard day of work and just hop on Discord and talk to these friends and just play a game that we all like and appreciate. Um, and I think one of the most beautiful things is we've had a bunch of people who are not furries uh, take interest in joining our guild because of our raid progression or other activities in the game and they've grown to think that furries are really cool um, so that's awesome uh, this year did have some tough points though uh, I won't I won't lie uh, this was probably one of the hardest years of my life personally uh, I had a lot of things happen uh, just with myself uh, with work and with other things that have made this year really difficult. Uh, and one of those things is this year, uh, I think we all lost people this year. Uh, it seems that this year was particularly bad for losing loved ones. Um, and while I am not, you know, a stranger to that, and I lost, you know, family members and such, and as did Strokes. Uh, I think it was very hard for the furry community to lose Dog Bomb, uh, Tony. But I think something very special happened this year, and that was we celebrated Dog Bomb's life even after he passed away. And the furry fandom has basically taken a dedication to working with the ALS Association to try to end ALS, eradicate it, so that nobody else will lose loved ones to ALS. And this year, hundreds of thousands of furries all over the place helped to raise many, many, many thousands of dollars. Uh, I know the Massachusetts furs, we've done uh, ALS walks this year and we'll be continuing to do them next year. Conventions such as Anthro New England and Furthermore will have the ALS Association as their charity for next year. Uh, and it's been truly beautiful to see the outpouring of love. Um, after we did lose such a kind soul as Tony, uh, to see the effect that one person can have on an entire community, to rally them together and bring them together for a good and positive cause and help us spread hope, spread joy, by going to these events and raising money. Obviously, um, scientists and educated people will be able to get together and try to, try to find a cure, but also by going to these events and just being there and sharing our personal stories and dressing up in our costumes and delivering hugs and just being silly, uh, we also inspire hope and love uh, from one person to another person. And that's really beautiful. These events can be really hard for a lot of people. So when we go there in our happy animal costume, we're helping the kids to be happy, have, helping the adults to be happy. They see us, they want to have a hug. And that human interaction is really important. So don't forget the impact that you have when 
you are having fun and you're dressing up and you're just being yourself and saying hello and offering a hug, that can have immense impact on other people. And keep that in mind all the time. Try to spread love and positivity. Try to help others. Try to do good. Try to leave a positive impact on this world. If we can all just try, we can all do really great things and we can change the world. We absolutely can. 2019 was a rough year. 2020 is the start of a new decade and I think it could be a great decade, a really great decade. But we all have to make sure that we're working together and working really hard to push it in the positive direction. So just do your part to, to help that play out. Uh, so yeah, to get back a little bit from all the serious talk, uh, you know, this video is going up on YouTube. So, YouTube. I wasn't very good at YouTube this year. Uh, I had said last year I was going to do this, that, and the other thing. And I ended up putting out one dance video and one skit video for Pi Day, followed by one skit video uh, around Halloween. That's three videos. And that's not very good. Uh, I'll always want to do a Pi Day video, and I'd like to always do a Halloween video now, but I want to try and do more. I'd like to do some collabs. I got to do a couple with, you know, some of my video friends, and that was really fun on their channels. But I'd like to do a few more, and next year I'd also really like to bring back my Furry History series. I know those videos are really, really long, and not everybody has the time to chew through that much information. But it's important to me that somebody is documenting the history of the furry fandom. So I'm going to try and get back into that. And along with uh, some help from some local furs and not local furs, I'd like to try and make that uh, more of a passion that I pursue is the cataloging of the history of the furry fandom. Next year, I just, I just want to do more on YouTube, and I'm sorry that this year was kind of lackluster. Uh, I know there was that whole weird thing where I was streaming on Twitch, Twitch for a while uh, when WoW Classic came out. Uh, I probably will continue to do that. Uh, I've just had a very busy uh, late October, November, and now December, and honestly it's not going to get too less busy for a while. Uh, so. I'll do my best. Next year, I'm taking an oath to myself to focus on my mental and physical health. Uh, I just need to get both of those into a much better place. Uh, honestly, I haven't gone to the gym in a long time, and I really need to go back to the gym and start getting into better shape, just for my own personal reasons. Uh, it's wonderful and beautiful if you're like, oh, you're fine, you look great. That's great, and I appreciate your opinion. But I really want to get back to the gym and get back to pushing myself and get into better shape and dancing more and hopefully participating in the competitions more instead of just emceeing them or running them or judging them or anything like that. Because whilst I do appreciate that and I have a lot of fun doing it, I, I've had a lot of people come up to me and say, hey, why don't you dance? When are you going to dance? Are you ever going to dance again? And honestly, the are you ever going to dance again has made me sad enough, let alone people coming up to me and asking me if I even dance. I've been doing that for a long time. 2012. Come on. Jeez. So clearly I got to get back at the game. But that said, I've got some other passion projects I really want to focus on next year, and I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, some secret stuff that, if it pans out, will be really, really cool. I'll still be focusing on my WoW Guild. Uh, I can't really not focus on it since I'm the, the GM of it. Uh, I am going to be stepping away from staffing duties, but that's another video for another day. So for the most part, uh, yeah, I'm going into 2020, and I'm going to make it the best year I possibly can. I've got a roof over my head. I have a job. I've got food in my belly. I've got an amazing boyfriend with strobes. Uh... I'm good. I'm good. And I'm going to make 2020 really great and the start of an awesome new decade. And I hope you guys will too. If you've had a hard time this year, 
maybe a hard time the past couple of years, and you're looking at 2020 and you're like, I don't think it'll get better. Throw that out the window. If you think like that, it's not going to help. Do your best to be positive and think, hey, you know what? I'm going to give it my all. Whatever happens, happens. Give it your all. Put your best foot forward and be positive. Be the change that you want to see in the world. Make it happen. You can do it and you will do it. I know you can. Life's tough. Once we get rid of childhood, the adult life, it's got a lot of stressors. That's for sure. At least in the furry fandom, we can put on our animal costumes and pretend to be a big dumb cat or a big dumb dog. So that's good. Don't ever forget, your play is incredibly important. And it's important to play, even when you're an adult. So, yeah. Sorry this was kind of a long video and not really exciting, but I just wanted to get my thoughts out for the end of this year and going into next year. Honestly, in a way, it's kind of a journal that just kind of helps me. So, I hope you somehow enjoyed this, and I can't wait for 2020. I'll be going to Anthro New England, Fernal Equinox, Furry Week in Atlanta, Anthrocon, and Midwest Fur Fest for sure, but I'm really, really, really trying to also get out to another convention next year. I'd really like to check out the Pacific Northwest. I've never been there before, so Anthro Northwest is very high up on my list. I also really want to try and visit my friends in California next year. I don't know if I'll be able to do both. Some changes at work are going to kind of determine that for me, unfortunately, since it'll be down to the available money that I have and the available time off. So we'll see. I'm trying, that's for sure. But I hope you're all great. And from Stroms and I to you guys, I love you so much. I hope you have a great holiday and we'll see you next year. Bye.